Um, I think we're live. I am live. Yes. Um, hello. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good evening. Where, depending on where you are, this is another episode of the series of the Advent in Art, and we will talk today about the Benedictus. This. Uh, beautiful pray that Saint Zacharias um, writes right after he's told that the um, that the, his his son names and it brings him to the temple. Now we saw it the other day the the circumcision and the um, naming of Saint John the uh, Baptist. Let me share the screen and I will show you the. Um, the Tornaboni Chapel again that we saw the other day. Um, if we go inside the Tornaboni Chapel, this is in, this 360, we can see that we are behind the main altar of the Church of Santa Maria Novella in Florence. We saw already the first three episodes. It's one in the center here, which is the um, naming of St. John the um, Baptist, which is right here, held by his mother. N next, on the right side, they're all women. On the left side, they're men. There are five on the right and, and six figures on the left, plus the others uh, in the center, the other two in the center. Um, Zacharias is writing his name, which we can find inscribed actually on the wall, Johannes es nomen eius, John is his name. And then um, the temple is uh, represented with this beautiful perspective, this beautiful architecture, typical of the Renaissance, but also looking at the past ancient Roman art and the beautiful flooring as well with beautiful um, marble floors. In the background, um, beyond the this archway stands, there is a beautiful background with this uh, plains, green plains and seas, a very uh, calm and beautiful image, which is uh, uh, an element of the um, what is to come with the come of the uh, Baptist and the Messiah, so of course, a promise of uh, of future peace and wealth and happiness. Now, um, today I would like to actually comment not just this piece this is very beautiful but we saw other elements of the same um, of the same fresco cycle this was frescoed by Domenico Ghirlandaio and his pupils in the center Zacharias as this Kind of funny angle he's got his 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 legs put in this way his torso is a little twist his head is looking away from what he's riding it's a very uh, complex position and it's like pivotal in the entire scene in fact we are naturally attracted to his scene because of this posture something that a trick that also michelangelo would use then in the future for both his frescoes and for some of his sculptures like the moses but um, let's go let's leave florence and let's go to Cleveland, because in the Cleveland Art Museum, there is this artwork by Juan de Flans, which was a Flemish artist born in um, Gand or, or Bruges in the, in, the Flan in the Flanders, basically today's Belgium. But he worked for Isabel of Castilla, the Queen of, of, um, of Aragon, and um, in Spain, and um, or also known as Isabel the Catholic, and the scene it was this um, panel belonged to a larger triptych, to a larger uh, wooden panels, and was originally made for a convent in Spain. As um, uh, Juan de Flanders lived most of his life in Spain, it was actually, even if it was trained in the Flanders, basically worked and lived in Spain. So the scene is has got two different moments. The moment when uh, Elizabeth just gave birth, and then we have here down at the center, the Virgin Mary presenting the child to Saint Zacharias. Zacharias is writing, not just his name, because he's writing a lot more stuff. And it's writing basically the Benedictus, the praying, when he say, blessed will be the God of Israel who have visited and, 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 um, redeem his people and defend the people against his enemies. Some of these sentences are used in the in many religious services, Christian services, so you could find it in the Catholic service and in other services. It's very important, the fact that he acknowledges the 
the what what is about to happen the baptist will be the last of the prophets and will be the first one to foresee the coming of the messiah uh, as jesus christ so uh, it's very important here we have the virgin mary very nicely dressed with these beautiful flowers uh, in her um, uh, pearls uh, in the shape of a flowers in her hair and then the praying the ave maria is actually inscribed on the edge of her, her garments so which are very nicely and very richly decorated in the background there is a servant kind of kind of an ugly face but beauty wasn't one of the values of the flemish artists they were looking for um a kind of um of other feelings compared to the um, uh, Italian art or that was in search of this idealized beauty, architectural perfection. In the Flemish master, there's mostly indoor scenes, like in this one. There is a great details for the objects, not as much for the people. And you could see here also this beautiful uh, mirror, um, which is, is, um, is, um, it's got also the reflection of the window here. It's one of those curved mirrors, so it reflects the entire the entire room. It's quite interesting and can be found in many paintings, famously the Arnolfini couple in in the in the, by Van Eyck. And here we have a little plant that's just flourish as the old lady was able to give birth. So the plant can flourish indoors again. Is these are all allegories, and the servants coming with this red fruits again, a symbol of the passion of the Christ is about to come. Since Zacharias, who is frightening, he's got the ink and the pen, and then he's got his staff, the dried stick on his floor, on his feet, and on the right there is a beautiful um, a fire pit that is burning with the smoke coming out. You can actually see the paint brushes. Now the um, the painting is beautiful. It's so different from the Renaissance frescoes. Just wanted to use this as a comparison. Although there is a great attention for the garments, for the scene, even for the details. For example, the hair, and and some other anatomical details, the wrinkles. There isn't a search of idealized beauty. There isn't a search of um, of a kind of. Uh, grand composition quite the opposite which is reflects the mentality the culture the purpose of these pieces um as a last element to uh, to add to this um painting i taught today to put on some music in particular a piece by this welsh composer um carl jenkins who his uh, was born in 44 is a welsh contemporary musician who's still um, she's still working nowadays and although he's got this kind of Harry Potter teacher looking he's a, is one of the greatest contemporary composer and a few years back in 20 in 2000 about 20 years ago he composed this beautiful piece Benedictus part of a larger piece called the uh, Art Man who is basically um, who is basically uh, um, a concerto but in a form of a mass um, and in, in which he included also elements from the Arab and Muslim culture, from the Buddhist culture, so he was able to include different religions in one beautiful piece. We can listen to that. There's a cello starting and for a couple of minutes and then the choir coming in. I will play it all now and then I will post also the link on our Facebook group. So there is another one tomorrow about the first, episode, first the beginning of the life of John the Baptist and then, of course, the, the first episode episodes of the nativity and then the 14 will speak about the nativity the 14 the 15 and then this talks will be republished again thank you very much for following i'll leave you with some great music and stay tuned i'll see you tomorrow i remind you that sunday there'll be a, a virtual tour about botticelli ciao